Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today, as you can see, I'm coming at you another, with a new Let's Play series. We're doing Ad Astra. This is going to be replacing Liar for a little while until it gets updated. I'll probably do them both side by side. But yeah, I have actually been very much looking forward to this. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's been very highly requested. Um, I can't wait to delve into it. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right in, shall we? Alright, <clears throat> Alarm Chain, you're up. Off on a new journey we go. I've heard a lot of good things about this. It's so large. It's too much. How do they get anything done? Sensing doubt. Shall we proceed with the, with the directive, Amicus? I don't know. Are you sure they're level 5? Data from mission 3265193 indicates primate species with level 5 intelligence and... Understood. Thank you. Most recent data indicates that all uplift attempts failed. Ha! Huh. That figures. Why did we try to uplift here in the first place? Sensing doubt. Shall we proceed? Name of the planet? Earth. Huh, interesting. Location of Romanus uplift? The city of Rome in the state of Italy. Is the probe there? It has arrived. Give me a visual. Zoom in. That doesn't look like Astra at all. Reminder that uplift failed. Ruins of uplift attempt remain. Show me the ruins. Showing the Roman Forum. Sensing doubt. Shut up, please. What the hell are they even saying? That's not the language. It's all messed up. Sensing that creature there. They are called humans. Get closer. It's a human? Collecting data. He appears to be a young male human. Initiate landing sequence. Have you located the directive? Yes. Warning, that full nexus analysis is incomplete. Ooh, excuse me. Now, please, we cannot waste time outside of this stretch drive. Initiating landing sequence. I'd say my AI voice is pretty good. It's hard to believe that I'm actually here. After years of fantasizing about it, I'm in Rome. I've been bouncing around with my friends like an idiot all day. Yeah, I look like a total tourist, but this is what I've been saving up for for the past two years. A whole semester in Rome with the study abroad program. All the conversations I've had with my parents about what a waste of money it would be evaporates from my brain as I take in the view. We only have a few hours, so we move from the form, from the form of Palatine, a Palatine Hill, then finally to a nearby disco where I just get a little drunk. Before I know it, it's two in the morning, and somehow my friends and I are unable to, are able to stumble to a taxi that takes us back to our apartments. I walk unsteadily through the darkness, glad that I have the place to myself for now. Apparently my group was the first to arrive, and my assigned flatmates won't be there for a few days at least. I open the door to my room and move my hand along the wall. I stumble, then sit on my bed, bouncing happily for a moment. I think about going onto the balcony, but I've been walking all day and it feels too nice to be sitting down. Plus, it might not be a great idea considering the state I'm in right now. Still, just knowing the magic in the c of the city is just outside my window is, getting to make, is, getting, is going to make it hard to sleep. I sigh happily and look around my little room. Actually, I'm told that it's kind of big by the city's standards. It's still a little bare since I just moved in today. I would basically just dropped my suitcases next to the door before running out again. I glance at them, eh, but decide I'm way too tired right now to unpack even if my pajamas are in there. It's fine if I'm just laying on top of the covers. I'll get to it tomorrow. In the meantime, I just lay back, smiling in the afterglow of today's excitement. And tomorrow, I'll get to see even more! Damn it, I need to calm down. No way am I going to have the energy I'll need tomorrow if I'm up all night. We're up all night to get furry. <laughs> I've got the whole semester and on top of that school, and on top of that school doesn't actually start for another two weeks. There's plenty of time. Just relax for now and enjoy it. With that thought in my head, I start to drift off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Something moves. I lay there in the dark, wondering if I dreamed it. I had been dreaming, even though I can't remember exactly what it was about. Something about a portal, maybe? I listen for a while, but there's no other sound, just the occasional soft whoosh of a car passing by outside my balcony. Oh, God, oh, God return, okay. I shift around a little. The suffocating humidity is making the sheets stick to my skin, and I wonder if maybe there's a fan in the closet. I finally sit up in bed, realizing that there's no way I'm going to fall back to sleep like this. I could at least try sliding open the door, the balcony door, though I'm not sure that will do me any good. Worth a try, I guess. 
I groggily slide out of bed and try to slide the glass door open, but it doesn't budge. I struggle for a few more seconds before sighing and moving toward the door to find the light switch. My feet slide along the semi-cool wooden floor, which feels great, while my hands stretch out in front of me, searching for the wall. Right then I remember that I was woken up by noises, and I imagine some intruder standing there in the dark, waiting for me to bump into him. Feeling the hair stand up on the back of my neck, I quicken my pace and find the wall, fumbling around until... I quickly glance around the room, relieved that it's empty. Oh, hold up. One second, guys. I'll be right back. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm back. <clears throat> my parents had warned me about the crime rate here. While the city is technically safe in terms of murder, robberies and muggings are apparently pretty common. I had shrugged it off at the time, but now that I'm alone, I make my way to the balcony, looking for the lock before finally seeing that there's a latch near the top of the door. I unhook it and slowly slide the door open. I'm disappointed to find that the air, w the air wafting from outside is almost as stuffy as the air inside. Still, I take the moment to stare out at the lights of the city for a while. Even though I'm more interested in the ruins, the city itself is undeniably beautiful. Nothing like my hometown. That's when I notice that there's a strange smell in the air, like burning rubber. I stick my head out a bit further, looking around for the source, but I see nothing. Maybe that's normal here. I look back at the clock on the wall. 4 a.m. I sigh and shuffle back to bed, only realizing that I've left the light on once I've already fallen back, fir back first and onto the back front. Wah! Once I've already fallen back first onto the covers. I sigh and will myself to get up, but the tiredness has returned and the heavy humidity is almost like a warm blanket pressing down on me. I close my eyes. I'll get up and turn it off in a second. I just need to rest my eyes for a bit. Just for a bit. That's what we all say, isn't it? Especially when we try and get up. Oh, I'll just, uh, I'll get up in like five minutes and like 30 minutes later. <laughs> something moves again. And there's another smell in the air. A good smell this time. Something floral. It reminds me of lavender, and that's when something hard and sharp presses into my left eye socket just above the eye. It doesn't really hurt, but it shocks me awake. Oh! Well, h h hello there. It leans over me, something shining its grip which is pulling back from my fa from my head. Oh. Ah! <laughs> I kick out with both feet, hitting the thing leaning over me in its body. Oedipal! It let out a surprise grunt. Stumbling back and falling on its rear while I scramble back on my bed, pressing myself against the wall. Almost immediately, I scram it scrambles back up, revealing its massive build and its masculine shape. It He adjusts his cape and smooths down his fur before rubbing at his chest and giving me an odd look. Then he fixes a smile back on his face. Alve! Maria. <laughs> I stare. That's all I can do is stare. He stares back at me for a moment, then clears his throat. Alve! Hello! The space above my left eye throbs, and it sounds like I'm hearing two things at once from the same voice. Um, what is intelligier? Do you understand? Again, the bizarre twitching in my eye and in my brain, and hearing two things at once. I feel like I'm going to be sick. The room shifts and swirls a bit, then slowly starts to settle. The twitching in my head turns into a dull throb. I'm having a nightmare. Do you understand me? I stare at him, and he stares back. Come, I don't know if the chip is working. W what? The creature raises its head. It's raises its hand to its head, rubbing at it. Well, he can speak, and it's translating. Can you understand me? When am I going to wake up? Uh, he keeps staring at me, and automatically I respond to him. He, yes? Ah, good. Seems it's finally working now. I take a moment to adjust the, to the host brain. I struggle to keep up with his words. I'm still hearing what he's saying. It's almost Italian with the inflections and the rolling R's, but at the same time, it's definitely not Italian. Still, I can understand what he's saying, like he's speaking my own language at the same time. It makes it hard to concentrate. <clears throat> Let's see if I can... I am Italian, but I don't normally speak in an Italian accent, so... Let me uh, see if I can do something that not sound too stereotypical. Because in my head it's one way, but it doesn't mean I'm going... My, my, my mouth is going to accurately reproduce it. What is your name? <laughs> I don't think that's Italian, but we'll go with it. What is your name? Um, uh, mm, well, fuck, what is my character's name? Um, uh, Killian. I am never, ever going to put a normal fucking human name in any of my games, I don't In any of these games I play, I don't think. Killian. His expectant look almost forces the answer out of my mouth. Killian. Killian. Beautiful. I am Amicus. 
The confusing double language I was hearing is starting to fade, and now only my own language comes from his mouth. It's odd, the word is not quite matching up with his lips. What's even more distracting are the massive canines that continue to flash between behind those lips. I need to get the hell out of here. A dream or not, I don't like the look of the teeth and claws on this thing. Ah, this is the Linguva. Is the Linguva having troubles again? I don't respond, instead glancing at the door just to the right behind this. And behind this amicus. Hey guys, in the comments, let me know what kind of voice I should do for amicus. He frowns. Come. You're told me they're level 5. I can't even speak with it. It takes me a moment to realize he's not talking to me. I hear a soft chatter coming from the wolf, like someone's talking to him from a phone, but I can't see anything. Yeah, well, he kicked me in the chest. Amicus rubs at his chest with a frown, more muffled speaking. Of course I didn't. He just kicked me. He's looking at me like he has no idea. More muffled speaking interrupts him. Oh, wait. What? Are, are you serious? Now he looks pissed, and I press myself harder against the wall, trying to work up the courage to make a break for the door. Help. Wait, so you're always offering me opinions on my mood, but you couldn't offer that? More muffled babbling, but the wolf thing interrupts it with a, it with a snarl. Well, what the hell do I do now? His lips are drawn back, and now I have and now I get a real good view of those canines. I stare wide-eyed at them, and that's when he seems to notice me again. He readjusts his expression into a smile, but I can still see a fang poking out. Hey, listen. Something about the way he acts, his expression, demeanor. He's so human. Could you could you come with me outside for a quick moment? For some reason, the realization of his humanness makes me absolutely positive that this is a dream. This must be a character from a game or movie that I'd seen. I shake my head slowly at him. Um, uh, please? I just stare, still waiting to wake up. I've had dreams where I couldn't wake up before, and this is just one of those. I remember reading somewhere that if you aren't sure you're dreaming, you can plug your nose. If you can still breathe, then it's definitely a dream. But I remain frozen against the wall. The massive wolf sighs, and his paw suddenly moves to, my, to his waist. I only have a moment to see some sort of device with multicolored lights before he moves, and my entire body seizes up and things go black. Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to happen. My body feels strangely numb. It's like when I wake up with a dead leg or arm, except right now it's my entire body. The only thing I can really feel is a sharp, cold pain behind and above my left eye. I try to wiggle my fingers and hands, wondering if I'm having some sort of sleep paralysis. They move. At least I think they do. Everything's so dark. Am I still in the apartment? Usually there's a little bit of light coming from the balcony because of the street lamps, but everything is pitch black. I start to feel a little panicky, both from the numb feeling and also the idea that I might have gone blind somehow. I try to remember what happened last. D did I go out somewhere? It may be a club. Uh, the, the disco. Did I take something? I start to push myself up, and that's when I feel something soft under my hands, and something very hard under it, like concrete. I'm definitely not in bed right now. Now, now I really am starting to panic. I'm wondering if I've been kidnapped. I get on my hands and knees, thankful that at least the numb feeling is going away. I'm also relieved to find out, and find out I'm not blind, and I see a soft glow of light outlining what's roughly the shape of a door in front of me. I open my mouth, about to call out before I know it, before I force it shut again. I have no idea where I am or how I got here, but I'm not liking the signs. My head throbs a little and I close my eyes tight, trying to steady my breathing, listening to my heart pound. I definitely got back to my apartment. I remember going to bed and then I remember... My eyes fly open as I remember that wolf creature staring at me with those blue eyes. And those teeth. Oh my god, there's no way, there's no fucking way! I open my eyes again and stare at the soft light, trying to listen. There's a constant hum of some kind, like a, a whirring of a large machine. It's gentle and almost soothing, but it makes me think I'm in some sort of vehicle. But I don't feel anything. No bumps or turns. I slowly crawl toward the door, listening as hard as I can for voices or movement, anything that might tell me someone's nearby. As I get closer to the door, I do hear something, a type of beeping and chirping. I stay in that position for what feels like a solid 15 minutes, not hearing anything more. I think about trying to open the door, but I realize that might not be a great idea. I still don't know if that wolf is real. No, I know he isn't real. What's more likely is that someone shipped, someone slipped something into my drink and I hallucinated everything. I had laughed off my parents' warnings that tourists are vulnerable in Rome, but now that doesn't seem so crazy. Someone had drugged me, followed me to my apartment, then kidnapped me. I need something, a weapon, before I try opening the door. I, I feel like I'm in the closet of some kind, so there's probably something here that I can use. Slowly, I get on my knees and start moving forward, waving my hands in front of me. If I can find the shelves, then I can just feel around for something solid and... 
My hand sweeps what feels like a box, and what follows is a clang of metal as something falls to the floor. I cringe, squeezing my eyes shut as the sound echoes around the room I'm in. I kneel there in complete silence, stunned. And that's when light spills over my body, followed by a large shadow. Oh hey, you're awake! Did you know he was awake? Yes, for approximately .2 hours. I swear to the gods, why are you so useless? I sit there, not having turned around yet, but the shadow gets bigger and I feel him looming over me. I get a whiff of lavender. Finally, I slowly turn my head and see the wolf. Oh, 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 that's a cool design. He towers over me, his broad muzzle pointed down so that he can look me right in the eye. While his size and general demeanor are intimidating, his eyes are warm and friendly. That doesn't really matter to me right now, as I realize that I hadn't been dreaming or hallucinating earlier, or the dream hallucination is ongoing. The wolf moves towards me, and I immediately scoot back until the shelves behind me dig deep into my spine. I vaguely notice the metal thing I'd knocked over earlier. It's a polygon-shaped thing with a long cord running out of it. Remember, the human doesn't know about the Galaxias. Proceed with caution. The wolf's ears flick before he visibly tries to write his expression into a smile. Hello, human. Sorry, I mean, Killian, right? Again, I get caught up in watching the movements of his mouth counter to what I'm hearing in my brain. Then I notice that he's waiting, watching me intently. I open my mouth and close it, then nod. The wolf stares till stares at me, seeming to not understand. Right? The silence stretches on until I finally force myself to speak. Y yes It comes out in barely a whisper. Great. So now that we understand that, I can tell you that I'm from the star Stella Vita. Very far from here. The wolf sets his paws far apart, his eyes wide as he emphasizes the distance. He's talking to me in a way one might to a very dumb two year old. I live on a moon called Adastra. Ad Adastra. Ad Astra? Adastra, whatever. Do you know what a moon is? You live on a planet. You live on what's called a planet. I stare at him for a moment, almost offended despite my continuing shock. Emika smiles gently. A moon is a large. I know what a moon is. Emika blinks at me. We have one. My words feel automatic. Actually, everything feels like it's on autopilot right now. Oh well, I didn't know that. That's great. There's an awkward silence as the two of us stare at each other. The initial fear is wearing off. I feel that if this alien is meaning to hurt me, he would have done it by now. At least, for now. Amicus rubs his paws together nervously. Um, are you hungry? He motions to, at his mouth, then rubs his stomach while licking his lips. Mmm. <laughs> Again, gestures and expressions that I have no trouble interpreting. The only alien thing about him is his appearance. I, I don't know. The wolf frowns, almost looking frustrated. His slow speech gets even slower. Well, why don't we give it a try, then? I guess my answers don't exactly make me seem intelligent, but I don't know what else how else to respond. Why don't you come out onto the deck with me? I'll make something. Emicus gives an exaggerated come on gesture with both paws as he walks backwards, straight into the wall as he misses the door. Ow! <laughs> um, yeah, let's go, human. He rubs the back of his head with a wince before turning and walking out the door. I stare at the open door for a moment before slowly getting up and following him, walking over a brown shag rug, the soft thing I'd been laying on. That's when I'm standing in the middle of what looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's a small and cramped. It's small and cramped, but the amount of unfamiliar glowing technology is almost overwhelming. The glass panels cover almost every inch of the walls around me, displaying images and characters that I can't even come close to understanding. Straight ahead of me are large windows looking out into the blackness dotted with specks of light. Specks of light. A am I in a spaceship? Where the hell is he taking me? Amicus is over to my right side, messing with what I can only describe as a large espresso machine growing, growing out the side of the ship. He's holding a cup under a nozzle, ducking down a little to stare at the opening. He notices me looking. Heh. <laughs> Takes a while to warm up. I have to, war I have to warn you that it's not very good. It's probably better than most of what you eat on your moon uh, planet, I mean. Just as, he's talking, just as he's talking, a very thick globule of brown sludge shoots out of the nozzle, half of it missing the cup. Ah, oh, damn it. The wolf hastily moves the cup to catch the rest of it while reaching over with his other paw to snatch up a rag from a hook on the other side of the machine. Sorry, this thing is near broken. Do you want to sit down? He nods his head over at one of the two seats in front of the windows. Just, uh, don't touch any of the bright lights, okay? I make my way over to the front of the desk, still waiting to wake up. I stand beside the seat, reaching out to touch the soft red bristles of the helmet and the wings on the sides. This only enforces the feeling that I'm hallucinating or dreaming. 
There's a strange Roman influence to Amicus and the ship, one that's almost cartoonish. Has my obsession over Rome gone too far? I can just imagine myself in some Italian hospital right now babbling about Roman wolf aliens. Go on, it's Sid. Amicus plants himself heavily in the seat next to mine, holding two cups of what looks like brown sludge. He holds one out to me. I take it gingerly before sitting down, and looking into the cup, the food that has the consistency and look of half-melted chocolate ice cream, except it's warm and smells like dirt, like literal mud. I scrunch my nose up at it, which Amicus notices. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ah man, I'm liking this so far, I love the art style. But anyway guys, this is a new Let's Play series of Ad Astra, or Ad Astra, whatever it's called. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.